Welcome to the Sigma 7 400 volt features and benefits e-learning video. Hi, I am Micah Studeman. Sigma 7 delivers exceptionally high speed and extraordinarily accurate control, which maximizes system performance. Simply put, it allows you to operate your machinery faster and with higher precision than ever before. A new 400 volt voltage class servo pack has been added to the Sigma 7 family which allows the hardware to be used in more applications. Here's a quick preview. Sigma 7 400 volt servo packs are offered in single and dual axis variants, which can also be controlled via Mechatrolink 3 or EtherCAT communications. The inputs wire to the top and the outputs wire to the bottom with no spacing required between the units when mounted. The Escawa software environments for configuration and programming support the Sigma 7 400 volt product. Now let's look at this in more detail. Looking at the model information, we can see that the 400 volt model is being released with a single axis and dual axis servo pack. Communication with the single and dual axis servo packs can be done using either the Mechatronic 3 protocol or EtherCAT protocol. When it comes to servo pack capacity, the single axis servo packs range from 0.5 kilowatts to 15 kilowatts and the dual axis servo packs have a 0.75 and 1.5 kilowatt capacity per axis. More model information can be found by looking in the catalog. The servo packs come with seven inputs and five outputs that are available through the CN1 connector. Three of these seven inputs can be implemented as high speed latches to capture the encoder position of the motor. These high speed inputs allow time critical information like registration marks to be seen and processed by the servo pack. The 7S and 7W models both have the same numbers of inputs and outputs. The safety and closed loop option modules are currently supported on the Sigma 7S and Sigma 7W servo packs. This safety card is SIL3 certified just like the internal safety of the servo packs. The option module slot is located on the top right side of the servo pack. Along with the 400 volt servo packs comes the 400 volt motors. These 400 volt motors are either part of the A series, low inertia motor, J series, medium inertia motor, small motor capacity, or G series, medium inertia and medium capacity motor. The connector on the motors is a heavy duty style connector and the power connector can be slightly rotated for cable management. There are many accessories or peripheral devices that you can add to the servo pack, such as an EMC line filter, regen resistor, shielding clamp, surge absorber, and DC reactor. Now let's look at some key features of the 400 volt models. The servo packs use the book frame style. This allows the units to be mounted in contact with one another and saves linear cabinet space. Taking a look at the servo pack, you can see that it is laid out differently compared to the Sigma 5 4 volt. The idea behind this layout is to have all of the inputs come into the top of the servo pack and have the outputs come out of the bottom. So on top, we have the main power, DC power terminals, control power, Mechatronic 3, I.O. signal, safety, encoder, and computer input connections. The motor terminals and dynamic brake connector are on the bottom. The only difference between the single axis and dual axis is the computer connector on the dual axis is on the front instead of on top. Another feature is that the DC bus connector has two connection points at each terminal. This makes wiring easy for sharing the DC bus between the servo packs. Looking at the CN1 connector, you can see that the terminal block is built right into the connector. This reduces the amount of cabinet space while allowing the user to easily modify the I.O. connections. The power connector now simplifies the process of wiring the control power in parallel to multiple servo packs. 
An extra positive and negative terminal is added so that two wires don't need to be inserted into one terminal when transferring control power from one servo pack to another. The last key feature is that the small capacity 400 volt servo packs, 0.5 kilowatt to 5 kilowatt, have a built-in connector for adding an external dynamic braking resistor. A dynamic braking resistor is used to stop the load during an emergency stop or when the servo pack is unable to control the load. The smaller servo packs come with an internal braking resistor, but when a bigger one is required, it can be added externally. The larger capacity servo packs, 6 kW to 15 kW, do not have the dynamic braking circuitry built in, but it can be added externally. Support for the servo packs has been added to Sigma Win Plus version 7.23, which is used to configure and tune the servo packs, and Moshworks IC 3.4 which is used to program the controller and change parameters in the servo packs. These programs can be downloaded at yaskawa.com. To wrap up, here's a final comparison between the Sigma 5 and Sigma 7 400 volt models. As mentioned earlier, the Sigma 7 400 volt servo pack does not require any spacing between itself and the servo pack next to it, where the Sigma 5 400 volt servo packs need up to 10 millimeter spacing between themselves and another servo pack. This can be seen in the simple diagram. This diagram shows the linear space required to mount eight servo packs from Sigma 7 400 volt and Sigma 5 400 volt with no spacing requirements and the option to have dual axis servo packs. The Sigma 7 400 volt servo packs take up 16.5 inches of linear space where the Sigma 5 servo packs take up 38.4 inches of space. Since the servo pack is part of the Sigma 7 family, it uses the Mechatronic 3 communication interface, has a 24-bit encoder, has a dual-axis servo pack option, and has a separate EtherCAT servo pack, where the Sigma 5 servo packs use the Mechatronic 2 network, have a 20-bit encoder, do not have a dual-axis option, and have the EtherCAT module as an option card. The I.O. available is similar between the two servo packs with the Sigma 7 having five digital outputs compared to three. The input voltage, control power, and servo pack capacities are the same between both families. Now when it comes to the connectors, there are a few differences. The only differences are when it comes to the input power connector and dynamic brake connector. The input power of the Sigma 7 is separated into three connectors compared to the single connector on the Sigma 5. The dynamic brake connector was added to the small capacity Sigma 7 servo packs where there weren't any included on the Sigma 5 servo packs. The motor connectors are slightly different as well. The Sigma 7 servo pack has a slightly more rugged connector compared to the traditional connector that is used on the Sigma 5 motors. The motor flange, shaft, and output power though are still the same between the two families. Thank you for watching this video. Visit yaskawa.com to find more information about the products we offer.